One of the most important properties of Bitcoin, which has caused many investors and institutions to invest large amounts of money into this asset is of course its limited supply. There is a maximum of 21 million Bitcoin that will ever be in circulation. And this supply of Bitcoin is generated by the Bitcoin miners. Because of the Bitcoin halvings that happen every four years, it will take approximately 100 more years for the final Bitcoin to be mined. But what happens when all 21 million Bitcoin will be mined? Well, that's what we're going to answer in this video today. And if you want to see more videos like this, be sure to smash the like button and to subscribe to my channel for more. Let's start by doing a quick recap of how Bitcoin mining actually works. And to clarify this, I'm going to use an analogy that everyone should be able to understand. So if you're watching this video, I'm pretty sure that you probably have a bank account. Whenever you're sending money through the bank, basically two things happen. Money gets deducted from your bank account and it gets added to someone else's bank account. And the second thing that happens is you pay the bank a transaction fee for processing this transaction. Whenever you're doing a transaction on the Bitcoin network, the same two things actually happen. Number one, Bitcoin gets deducted from your wallet and gets added to someone else's wallet. And number two is you pay a transaction fee to the Bitcoin network. But who exactly is the Bitcoin network? Well, those are the Bitcoin miners. Those are individuals or companies that own specialized pieces of hardware that verify transactions on the Bitcoin network. And in return, they receive a reward in Bitcoin. These mining rewards consist out of two components. Number one are the block rewards and number two are the transaction fees. Let's have a closer look at each one of these. Bitcoin is built on top of a technology called the blockchain. Basically what happens on the blockchain is that transactions are bundled together into blocks of transactions, hence the name blockchain. And these transactions are processed and verified by the miners. And this happens completely automated with specialized machines. And fun fact, I actually manage a few mining farms with over 80,000 of these machines. We are like the banking system of Bitcoin and whenever a block of transactions is processed, we receive block rewards. Now here's where you need to pay attention. Every four years, the block rewards get halved. This is what we call the Bitcoin halving events. And when Bitcoin got launched in 2009, the block rewards were around 50 Bitcoin. Four years later, this block reward got halved to 25 Bitcoin per block of transactions. Four years later, this was 12.5 Bitcoin. Four years later, it was a little bit more than six Bitcoin per block of transaction. And in the most recent halving, the block rewards got halved to a little bit more than three Bitcoin for every block of transactions that are mined by the miners. Now, this might sound like not a lot compared to the 50 Bitcoin that we would get a little bit more than a decade ago when you were mining Bitcoin. But nowadays, Bitcoin is worth a lot more. So even though in Bitcoin terms, you're getting a lot less, in fiat terms, you're getting way more. Let's quickly look at a few numbers to, to, to clarify this. So if you would mine a block of transactions in 2009, uh, that those 50 Bitcoin would be worth around $5, assuming a Bitcoin price of around 10 cents per Bitcoin. But those three Bitcoin that you would mine if you would mine a block of transactions nowadays, would be worth roughly $180,000, assuming a Bitcoin price of somewhere around $60,000 per Bitcoin. So as you can see, even though in Bitcoin terms you're getting a lot less, in fiat terms it's worth a lot more. Now let's talk about the second income stream that miners have, which are the transaction fees. So just like the bank, the more transactions happen on the network, the more transaction fees they can collect. Generally, during bull markets, we see a huge spike in the increase of transaction volume. In the previous bull market, miners generated $16.7 billion. That was in 2021 alone. Uh, Fortune magazine even published an article claiming that Bitcoin mining was suddenly one of the most profitable business models on the planet. But we don't only see a spike in transaction fees during bull markets. Sometimes events happen in the market that drive up the transaction volume. For example, recently we saw a huge spike in the popularity of ordinals. In case you've been living under a rock or you don't know what ordinals are, those are basically NFTs built on the Bitcoin network. And in Q4 
of 2023, ordinals gained a lot of popularity, which drove up the transaction volume on the Bitcoin network. And this resulted in a really great payday for miners. Also, more recently, we saw a huge spike in the transaction fees collected by miners right after the Bitcoin halving. One day after the halving, we actually set a record of uh, yeah, almost three times the previous all-time high in terms of transaction fees collected by the miners. It was roughly around $78 million that were collected the first day after the Bitcoin halving. So um, yeah, again, that was a really great payday for the miners. So as explained earlier, the miners have two different income streams. You have the block rewards and the transaction fees. The block rewards served as an incentive system to attract miners early stage in the Bitcoin evolution process. Because without miners, there, it wouldn't be possible to do any transactions on the blockchain. Without miners, there's basically no Bitcoin. That's why there were huge incentives for people that became Bitcoin miners in the early days of Bitcoin. And as Bitcoin is maturing as an asset class, we see more and more adoption. Publicly traded companies are buying it up to put it on their balance sheet. Pension funds, the Japanese pension fund managing $1.4 trillion of assets, recently announced they're interested in buying up some Bitcoin. We have countries that are adopting Bitcoin as a legal tender. We've got large asset managers such as BlackRock, Fidelity, Vanguard that are aggressively getting into Bitcoin. And the average Joe also wants to get their hands on some Bitcoin. And as more and more people start to buy and sell and adopt Bitcoin, we slowly start to see the transaction volume go up. And the higher the transaction volume is, the more fees the miners can collect. And over time, the transaction fees will actually replace the block rewards as the dominant income stream of miners. And there you have the answer to the question, what happens when all 21 million Bitcoin have been mined? Miners will simply have enough income from the transaction fees generated on the network. So I hope that you enjoyed watching this video. And if you want to see more similar videos like this, well, I've linked two videos here above in the screen, which I highly recommend you to check them out. And if you got good value out of watching this video, be sure to smash the like button and to subscribe to my channel for more because I'm planning to post consistently during the crypto bull market to help you to get an edge as an investor in the crypto market. All right, thanks, peace out, and I'll see you in the next one.